Now, this lesson's gonna be pretty detailed. I mean, you'll really have to hold on tight because we're gonna go very technical and very deep in everything you need to do to install vCloud Director. That includes the database, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux server, the SSL certificates, and actually installing the vCloud Director software. Let's begin at the beginning, which is the planning and the design, because you don't wanna just plow headfirst into this thing. It's kind of a beast. Um, once you've done it a couple times, you'll think, oh man, I, I can't believe I ever thought that was hard. But I know the first time I did it, I thought it was pretty intimidating. So the best way to start is to go over what you'll need ahead of time. You know, what software do you need to download? What IPs do you need to set? All that good stuff. So I'm going to give you kind of the shopping mall version of the you are here. And that here's the lab design and what we're trying to build in this vCloud Director course. Now, right now, the arrow's pointing towards the VCD cells, the vCloud Director server itself, because that's all we're doing in this lesson. The rest of it will be covered in different lessons, but this is where you are right now. In the planning and design phase of vCloud Director, we need to do a little bit of homework. Ah, nobody likes homework, right? But it's important because without this information and without having done this work ahead of time, you're going to be in for a lot of frustration. So let's just get it done now and get it out of the way. For the object identities, basically I'm just saying we need to go out and, and create kind of some personality for the server before we go and install it. And we need to figure out what IP addresses we'll be using for the vCloud Director server. We need one for the web service or HTTP service, but it's hard to say HTTP, so I like to say web service. The other one's for the console proxy service. And basically the web service is what we connect to when we open our browser and the console proxy service is what we connect to when we want to open up the console for a virtual machine. We'll also want to go ahead and make DNS A records for both those IPs. And that's just the relationship of this name goes to this IP. And finally, we'll need to determine what the logical name of the VMs need to be. In this lesson, it really just boils down to what are we going to call the virtual machine that's running vCloud Director. Sometimes it's the same as the DNS name and other times it's different. It's your choice. There's also some requirements that we'll need to meet ahead of time in order to really smooth out this install. The first is the vCloud Director 5.1.1 install bin file. That's kind of like, yeah, of course, if you're installing vCloud, you'll need the installation file. So I think no one's surprised by that one. The other one is we'll need a server running Red Hat Enterprise Linux version five or six. I'll be using version 6.2, which is basically RHEL 6 update 2. That's how you translate the 6.2. We'll also need to grab a file called libxdmcp. It's an RPM package. Basically, this is something that vCloud Director is going to need to operate that Red Hat Enterprise Linux doesn't come with out of the box. And I've got one of those nice little short URLs you can use to go grab that. And finally, we'll need a database. It has to be compatible with vCloud Director, so you're limited to SQL or Oracle. And out in the field, I pretty much see SQL all over the place. So guess what? I'll be using SQL in this demonstration. If you want to look at the complete list of all the databases you could possibly use, there's a link for that on this slide that you can go to. But for this lesson, I will be using MySQL Server in the lab, which is running Microsoft SQL 2008 R2 Enterprise. Do you need Enterprise to do vCloud Director? Absolutely not. I run it in the lab because eh, I'm, I'm into overkill. I just go with the biggest version there was. But you could run 2008 R2 Express, which is completely free, and that's fine. So since I was talking about the database, let's start with configuring the database. Now, a lot of times, this is kind of the more uh, creepy part of the install for most server admins because... I'm not a DBA, a database admin. I don't really spend a lot of time in databases. I know enough to get by, and probably you do too, because you've had to work with databases for vCenter and Update Manager and things like that. So let's go over the basics of what you need to do to configure the database for vCloud Director. Now notice we're doing that before we've ever actually even installed Red Hat or the vCloud Director software. We're doing this very far in advance to get it done. Fortunately, VMware provides some really handy installation scripts. And you can run these scripts to do all the heavy lifting. 
So you can be like, oh, man, look, I installed this SQL database. I'm awesome. And your friends will be like, how did he do that? And in the back, you know, behind closed doors, you just ran a script that someone else gave you. So that's awesome. That's like IT in a nutshell. The script's going to do four things. It's basically going to make the database, do a little bit of housekeeping in the form of some transaction isolation levels and things like that. It's going to make a database user account so that it can control the database. And it's going to assign permissions to the user account, which basically means it's going to make it the owner of the database. That's it. I will note, if you're not into SQL and you don't know what your mode is, you need to use SQL mixed mode authentication. There's two modes that SQL can be in, Windows authentication and mixed mode authentication. We need to make sure it's in mixed mode because otherwise we can't use native SQL accounts. We'd have to use Windows accounts, which is a no-go for vCloud. It needs a native SQL account. So I've opened a remote desktop session to my SQL server, which, if you notice at the top, very creatively named SQL. That's right. I like to keep my lab very easy, and it's almost impossible to forget the name of a SQL server called SQL. So let's dive right into the tool we'll be using on the SQL server to do the database work. If you click Start, Programs, Microsoft SQL, whatever flavor you have, you should have installed or have installed the Management Studio software somewhere on your server. It's either on your desktop, maybe it's on the server. I have mine on the server. Make sure that you have those tools somewhere readily available. Now my account, this uh, Chris account, is full you know, crazy level admin on everything. So I'm using that to connect. And I'm using a period here for the server name, which means the server that I'm on. If you're connecting from your desktop, you'll need to actually type in the server name. And because the server name is SQL, you kind of think, man, how lazy is this guy if he types a period to save two letters? But, you know, that's how I roll. So now I've got this stu management studio open. I'll pull up the script that VMware provides, and we'll go over how exactly it works. So first, let me switch over to the website on VMware so you can see how to get the script. Okay, so I'm on VMware's website, and all I did was I went to the support section, which opens up this big box, and I clicked vCloud Director. And once you do that, it's going to give you a list of all these different support files that you can look at. Now, this is important because you really need to know how to get here on your own. You can't always remember a link. Um, so the first one right here, vCloud Director Install and Upgrade Guide. That's your pot of gold right there. Click on HTML version, and it'll load this page right here. Now, it won't come directly to this page, you know, this actual piece, but it'll come to the main route. And all I did was I navigated down this little tree to how to configure Microsoft SQL Server database. If you want to cheat, you could just type SQL Server in the search bar, and it'll show you this link. But now you know exactly how to walk your way to this page and kind of to all these directions if you ever need to. So kind of that whole teach a man to fish, he'll never go hungry. I've now fed you for the rest of your life. You know, you're welcome. Okay, so it's telling you how to do the SQL Server database. That's great. This is kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. And there's the scripts. There's actually four of them. They're all very small. And they all start with this. You see how the text is kind of a different uh, font? And all it starts with the word use. Man, my highlighting is killing me here. There we go. It starts with use, and it ends with go. So that's the first script. And then here's the second script. Again, use to go. The third one, use to go. And okay, guess what? The fourth one, use to go. So you grab all four of those and copy them. And we'll switch over to SQL real quick, and I'll show you the script that I made that contains those four mini scripts. Okay. So we're back on the SQL Server, and I'll open a file that I generated called vCloud Query. I put it on my desktop, and it's just a paste of all those different scripts that you saw in there. That's all it is. I just copy and pasted it on over. Nothing that difficult. Now, I did make two changes, and you might be able to spot it. Now, the cool thing about working with a query in SQL Management Studio is it color coats all this stuff. It makes it really easy to read. What I did was I changed the file paths. Now, it's not cool enough to, to wrap this around, so I'll scoot over to the right a little bit. But the default file path was c colon, oop, was c colon vcloud.mdf. Well, that's not going to work. I don't want my database running on the C drive. And most database servers don't run their database files on the C drive. Mine runs on the E drive, specifically this long path. How did I find that? 
did it the old school way. Went to my E drive here, and you just have to know where it's at. It's in program files, Microsoft SQL Server, Microsoft SQL, blah, 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 here, Microsoft SQL, and then data. Make sure you memorize that. It's tested later. No, I'm kidding. So here we go. Here's all the data files for SQL. I just grabbed the URL up here, or the, the link rather, copied it, and then pasted it right into here. And there we go. Make sure there's a slash there. So I'm just telling it that's the path. So let's go over the script and show how it works. So the first part just saying, hey, use the master database and create a new database called vCloud. The first name is telling it where to put the database itself. I'll scroll over again. So that MDF is the database file. And the second file is the log file, basically the transaction logs. And there's a size limited to it. So 100 megs grow at 10%, one meg grow at 10%. So it's pretty small. That's all that first section is doing. It's just creating the database, telling where the files go, and telling it to uh, use, uh, this is basically saying do it in English. Nothing that fancy. Let's look at the next script. It's saying use the new vCloud database and alter it in four different ways. So let's do a little housekeeping there. All right, nothing, nothing too fancy there. The third script is telling you that it's going to use that vCloud database again, and it's going to make a user called vCloud. It might be a little confusing. You've got a database called vCloud, you got a user called vCloud, but we're making the user called vCloud with a password of very secret. That's the password that I gave to it. Now don't use a password that simple, but <laughs> I'm gonna get away with it in this demonstration and for this lab. So it's saying the default database for the vCloud user is the vCloud database, and it's an English speaking user, and the check policy is saying don't check the password policy for it creates the user, and there we go. That's the third script. The fourth script says, go ahead and make that vCloud user the owner of the database called vCloud, and you're done. And you could change any of these values that you want. It's up to you. I'm gonna leave it default. The only thing I changed was the password, and up here are the paths. So there's a play button up here. I'm gonna hit the play button. Let's see what's going on here. That looks good. Making sure there's nothing remnant in here. Nope, that looks good too. There we go. Now we have executed the script. Basically down here, it'll say query executed successfully. How can you check to make sure it was actually successful? Well, first you tell the program improvement thing to go away. Then you go to the logins and refresh it. And there's our vCloud user. Now if I get properties on the vCloud user, we can see that that person is mapped to vCloud and it's a DBO, database owner. Great, that's what we wanted. We should also notice with a little refresh magic, there's a new database called vCloud. And if I expand that out, we should be able to see in security, a user called vCloud, there he is. So he's associated to that database. And if I get properties on this database, I'll be able to see the permissions. I can see vCloud as a user of the database. So everything ran great. The query executed successfully is what we want. I'm gonna click OK or cancel because I don't wanna change anything. The database portion is now done. I mean, really all you did was you imported a query by copying, pasting scripts, changed the path, and set a password on a user right down here. That's it, not that bad.